Hello. Hello all and welcome. Welcome replay viewers. Hi, I'm Mary at Not Before Seven. That's where I blog and um, also my Periscope handle and Instagram and all of those things. So welcome and thanks for joining today. Yes, today I'm going to discuss my favorite math games. We are a game family, so there are a ton of games in this house. I love to play games. But ever since I did a little Periscope on math manipulatives, I've gotten a lot of questions. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about math. And so I just thought I would start setting aside Mondays and talk about some different math topics. And of course, um, because we try to add some enchantment to our math education, we love to play math games. So I thought today, hi, Vicki, um, welcome. I thought today we would just go over some of the math games that I use in the house. And I'm going to start with some really basic ones um, that are just really straightforward math facts. Hello from Arizona. Um, good to have you all here. Anybody else, you can type in where you're from. It's always fun to see where people are tuning in from. So one of my first math games that's very simple, and we play this with my youngest set, is Some Swamp. Some Swamp is a great game. Okay, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to Rob there. Okay, he's gone. All right, let me turn it around. Seattle, yay! Some Swamp is falling apart because we've had it for so long. This is a very basic addition and subtraction game. You can see that lots of people love this one. Um, you basically are rolling the dice to get around the board. When you land on an even space, you can't get off until you roll an even number. And when you land on a number, then you get a turn to roll the plus or minus die. We've lost the dies. We've had to make our own. You get a turn to roll the plus or minus, and you either then go forward six or back six, depending on what you order. And when you get to this little loop here, you have to keep going around and around and around until you hit the exit. So when your children roll, they basically roll two numbers and they either add or subtract them. So this one is really straightforward math. My kids, it's like they don't know it's math. They love this game. And I'm seeing in the comments, so many other people love this game. The kids, they just, they like it. I don't know what it is, but it's simple. And on a day that I feel like we either have been slacking in math or I just don't feel like teaching a lesson, we can just pull out some swamp. And honestly, they'll play some swamp on the weekends. They don't see it as math. So let's get to another one here. Two other really um, math games that I like are math dice. Oh, where can you get some swamp? My guess is you could find it on Amazon. We got it at a teaching store. Um, it's by Learning Resources. So if you have like a Teach Me store or something around, I bet it would be there. Um, we got it at a store like that when we lived in Maryland. So here's our next one, Math Dice. We have two versions of Math Dice. We have the junior version and the older version. The older version comes with two 12-sided die and three regular. The, there are a million different ways to play math dice. I'm gonna show you the basic one that comes with it. You roll the two and you multiply these two numbers. So we have 30 and that is your target number. Then what you do is you roll these and the kids can use five, six, and two any way they want to get to their target number. And whoever can get there and get the closest wins. So someone might yell out, um, let me think here and put on the spot. I have 32 because five times six is 30 plus two is 32. Um, and then someone tries to get closer. So somebody might say, I have 31. And now they're closer to the target because they did six raised to the second power, which is six times six is 36 minus five is 31. And you keep playing until someone no one can get any closer. So the winner of that round, because I'm not going to keep thinking about it, would be the person who got 31. So
So this one's really fun once you get older kids. Of course, you can put limits on this. Um, you can say no powers, no exponents, or you know that kind of stuff if they're not ready for it or you need to even it out between kids. But math dice is an easy little warm-up fun activity. It's very similar. So before I show math dice junior, I'm going to show another game. It's very similar to this game, 24. 24 is a classic. Um, my guess is this is on Amazon or any sort of teaching store you have around, but 24 is a good old fashioned, you try to make 24. So it comes with cards and you see the white dot. The single white dot means these are the easy ones and these are the four numbers you're given and you have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide to try to make 24. And that's pretty much it on these and the other side. So you could just lay these out on a table and when your kids come down in the morning, you know, tell them for every one they make, um, they can grab it and they get a piece of candy because it's Halloween and candy is everywhere. So just spread them out on the floor. In fact, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. Spread them out on the floor and say, any that you can make 24 with, you get to exchange for a piece of candy. If you can tell me how you made 24, it's going to be a little harder for the elementary schoolers, but they increase in difficulty. I have all the easy ones in the front. Ah, they increase up to three dots here. So a three dot card would actually be harder. So if you have varying ages in the house, you can use your three dot card with the older kids and you can use my, um, the two dot card with your intermediate kids and the one dot card. I'm sorry to see that your son says he hates math. You know, it's really funny. And I tell my kids this all the time. I really don't remember liking math a whole lot. In fact, in high school, I didn't like it at all. And the irony was I became a math teacher. So I tell my kids that a lot. Like, you know, don't predict your entire future based on how you're feeling about it right now because you just never know. But for those kids that are struggling in math, that don't love math, I hope some of these games might give you some ideas of how to make it fun and not just make math a workbook. We try really hard not to make math just the workbook every single day, but to still have some fun with it. So let me show you the junior version of the math dice. Different. In this one, you get five really big die and you get a target die. So you're gonna go ahead and roll your target die. This one landed on 10. So remember in the advanced version, you had two and you multiplied them. This version, you just have one. And then you roll all these. Now in this one, people sit and they can add, subtract, multiply, and divide to try to get 10. And they yell out when they have 10 and then they have to show how. So let's say I say, I have 10. And I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to say to the group, um, 4 times 3 is 12, minus 1 is 11, minus 1 is 10. And then what happens in this game is you keep the die that you used. And any that are left, which we don't have many this time, are for the other players to try to get to 10. So at the end of the round, once no one else can get to 10, which would end at this point because we only have one die left, you get that many points and you move forward on a little board that's in here. There's a little cloth board. We don't usually even use the board. We just keep track of points. So let's try it again where maybe we have, um, we can use more. Okay, so we have 12 and we have to get to 12. So I might say, okay, I can get to 12. Um, I have six plus three is nine plus three more is 12. Then I would get these. And once again, we can't go anywhere else. So you get the idea. It can, um, and you can make up all sorts of variations for that, but that's the junior version of the math dice game. So there are no questions about those. I'll go to the next ones. Another classic that I'm thinking most people know how to play is Yahtzee. Yahtzee is one of my favorite games, so let's put that there. Yahtzee is a lot of fun. Great introduction to poker. <laughs> You'll learn what a full house is and a straight. Um, but it requires a lot of adding as you're rolling the die. And it's also a really easy one to talk about probabilities because if you've never played Yahtzee, um, the goal is to fill out one of these score sheets and to keep track of what you get, but you get one roll and you have to put it somewhere on the score sheet. You can't just pass. Though you see at the bottom, there is a chance. 
So the interesting thing with that one, when you talk about probability, is when your child has to zero out something to talk about, well, do you think you have a higher chance of getting a full house, or do you think you have a higher chance of getting a large straight, and kind of talk about how that works. We've also talked about um, when you roll a two, three, four, and five, you have a really good chance of getting a large straight, because you could get a one or a six, and that kind of thing. So a lot of probability just comes up in that game. It's a great one. Um, I'm not going to go through explaining how to play it might be a little difficult but you basically roll five die and then you have to you get two more rolls you keep what you want and then you roll the rest of them and then you get one more roll you keep what you want and then you roll some more all right so Yahtzee is another great one you could look into let's see what else I have in this pile oh another family favorite here Blockus. Blockus is a great math game for your visual spatial kids um, we have some visual spatial kids. Oh, look, there's a game set up. This is like Tetris. Everyone gets pieces and everyone gets the same shapes. So all of these shapes are in blue, green, red, and yellow. So everyone starts with 21 shapes to put on the board. And you start, you have to touch a corner. So for the first round, when you go to put your blue on, your first piece has to touch your corner. By the way, the person playing around with this was playing wrong. You can't do this. Um, then your next piece has to touch corner to corner like this and fit on the board. It cannot have two flat sides touch. So you have to touch corner to corner. And here's another one where you would touch corner to corner. And while you're doing it, you're rotating around the board and everyone's taking a turn. And eventually the board gets pretty packed. But what can happen is you can um, go through people. So let's say we had a blue like this and green was here and now it was green's turn. Green can touch corner to corner and have flat touch blue and that would work out fine. So that's allowed. But Blockus is a great one, especially for a lot of who are resistant to maybe numbers and the idea of 24 or the math dice just is a little too much for them. Blockus is just a great visual spatial um, reasoning game and my kids love that one. So that's another math game we have in house. I have over here, yes, Blockus. It's a fun one. Another one that we like here is Mancala. Mancala is another great counting game. So if you teach this, um, even little ones, oh, your three-year-old uses Blockus as a puzzle. As you can see, when I open Blockus, I have someone who wants to say hi. Hello. When I open Blockus, mine clearly use it for just design and landscape and all sorts of things. Um, Monk is a very simple game where you take up your counters and you drop them. So there's four around in a circle. One, two, three. Four. Oh, well, you have to get to the other side. So that would have been an illegal move. I really should have started. Somewhere else. You have to get to the other side. So you drop your counter. One, two, three, four. And so it requires a lot of counting. Anytime you move this side, <laughs> Trisha Kira says hi. Oh, hi. You move this side, they move that side, and the winner is the one who gets the most in the end here. And what happens is eventually you'll get enough counters that you'll make it all the way around the board. And if you land, if your last one, let's say I had all of these down here in this in this board. So if at this point I had all of these, when I go around the board, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, do not put one in your enemy's spot. You don't have to do that. Eight, then that would mean I now get all the ones across from me and mine down in my winning hole. So the directions for a lot of these can be found I recommend what I don't have. There are Moncala boards that fold in half to close. Um, if somebody can write the name Moncala, unfortunately I don't have a box for this one. It just came exactly as it is. I'm thinking it's M-A-N-C-A-L-A, -A -A, Moncala. If somebody could write that in the comments, that would be great. But get the one that the board folds it will be, you'll thank yourself because mine is as you see it and storing it is impossible. M-A-N-C-A-L-A. -A -A. There it is. Thank you, Swampy Joe. Love that handle. Um, 
All right, Mancala is a great one. Of course, I'd be remiss not to show the classic chess. Um, all four of my children, including the six-year-old, <laughs> play chess because I think it's a great strategy and logic game. You're welcome, Christy. Um, you can start by just teaching the basic moves and not really necessarily the goal. Like, oh, here's how the horse moves, the, you know, the knight, and here's how the rook, the castle moves. And um, you can put them out there and just learn the basic moves and then build up to some strategy. So chess is a great math time game. All right, this one is my absolute favorite game. I got this one in childhood, and I still remember it because I love logic. And that game mastermind so i'll put it there in case anyone needs a screenshot this is a fantastic logic game okay mastermind and here's how it works hold on i gotta get the box open let me put you down a second mastermind is a code breaking game where you create a code for your partner to solve. So you would use, I think it's four, how many colors are here? One, two, three, four, five. I think it's six colors. And you choose from the six and you put a secret code down at this end of the board. Not for a little bit. And so here's my secret code down here at the end. And someone else tries to solve the code. That's right. My eight-year-old came in to tell you. And then someone else tries to solve the code. I will show you how this works because the scoring can get a little confusing. The thing about this game is that the person scoring has to use just as much logical thought and strategy as the person, not strategy, but logical thought, as the person guessing. So both players, it's a partner game, both players have to be doing a lot of thinking. So let's pretend I was opposite someone. And over somebody made a guess. Okay, they guessed orange, green, yellow, and white. Okay, so this is my actual code, and this is my partner's guess. I now have to use these red and white pegs to tell him what he got right and what he got wrong. So in no particular order, the red peg means that he has one right color and it's in the right place. And we can see that that happened. This green is the right color and it's sitting in the right place. So I would give him one red peg. And I would say, you have one color that is correct and in the right place. And then we see that I have a yellow and he has a yellow, but it's in the wrong place. So then I would give him a white. And now you have one color that is the correct color, but it's in the wrong place. Based on this information, he would want to make another guess, he or she. And then I would score it again. And that gives you 10 options. When you get good at it, you can pretty much get it in six options of the camera. It pretty much only takes six once you've really practiced it. So it is a great game for logic and the kids have a lot of fun with it. So sometimes on a game day, we'll pull that one out. Let's see, uh, what else did I wanna go over? All right, I have three more. The next one is laser. I'll put it up here in case anyone needs to screenshot it. Laser Maze is a logic puzzle problem solving game. My son is opening it because this is his game. He got it for Christmas and he loves it. It comes with a little laser. And what it comes with, hold on bud, let's let them see the cards, is three levels of cards. This is an example of one. So this is level expert. Can we get a beginning card? Sure. And it tells you how to set up the board using uh, these mirrors and targets. So the card would tell you where to put the pieces. So let's just do this one. Hold on, bud. Let me see. Let's put a target. He's, he might set it up for me. It tells you where to put your target and your laser. Now, you see if there's a question mark? It means it's not telling you which direction the laser faces. It does tell you which direction these triangle pieces face, and it tells you what you add to the grid. 
you add a purple to the grid somewhere to make this target light up. He already knows how soft I'll it is. I'll show you what it looks like when the target lights up. Yeah, so when the target lights up, it lights up. Now put the laser. We don't know necessarily which direction, but he knows he has to add one purple piece in any direction, and he has to get this to light up. And so that's a basic one. But As you get I'm more advanced. Show you something out. If you can't solve it, you can also turn it down to as that. That's right. The solution is on the back. A level three card looks like this. It has a lot more in it and a lot more directionally questionable um, pieces. And you're adding a lot more to the board to make it work. So this has been a great one. And um, there are more that are similar to this. There's one. There's one called um, Gravity Maze. And it's the same idea, but it is with marbles and you have to try to get the marbles to plink down in a certain place and you have to build the towers the right way and um, there's a few others along this style so if you look up one in amazon i bet a bunch of them would come up all right last two real quick and these are just different versions of tic-tac-toe because believe it or not tic-tac-toe is a strategy game critical thinking you got to be thinking ahead where you want someone to go and where you're going to go but tic-tac-toe itself can get a little boring so we have two versions of tic-tac-toe that we like and they are goblet gobblers there's one and tic-tac-toe so if anyone needs to screenshot those, I'll hold it there a second and back over to my other one. If anyone needs a screenshot, you can take it now. Tic-tac-toe gives you a tic-tac-toe board and your basic X's and O's. Now, I opened this and realized we were missing some. So let me get out the little, excuse me a moment. Let me get out the little pieces. I'll put you up there a second. Well, I'm getting out the board. It comes with four yellows and four oranges, and it comes with a little board that is causing me some problems here getting out. All right, here we go. Oh, where are all my pieces? All right, let me show you how this one's played. This is a tic-tac-toe game where the board starts in the center and yellow will go first and maybe orange will go. O, and then yellow would maybe go here and maybe orange doesn't like that so you always have a choice of either putting a piece on the board or actually physically moving the board but you could only move it over one go tell Daniel I'm in the middle of something I'll be right there or you can move the board but you can only move it one spot so you could move it one spot diagonally you can move it one spot this way, or you can move it one spot this way. But then that is your turn. You wouldn't get, so this would be a very bad choice because then yellow will win. So, but I could do this because now yellow has lost its opportunity to win. And on their turn, they could now place a new piece. So that's tic-tac-toe. And the last game I will show you is Goblet Gobblers. Goblet Gobblers is also a tic-tac-toe game. But instead of moving the board around, the pieces come in different sizes and they can eat one another. <laughs> so when you move, you have blue versus orange. And if blue happens to put a tiny piece and orange uses a big one, on your move, then let's say it's blue, orange can either go here and block blue or orange can just gobble up blue. So everyone has two of the big pieces, two medium size and two tiny. So part of the strategy is knowing when to use your big piece and when to use your small piece against your opponent. So those are just a few of our favorite games that fall under the math heading. Um, I'd love to hear scopes about math and I'm gonna to try to do those on Monday. Somebody wrote me and specifically asked me to do um, a periscope on how Brave Writer affects our math homeschooling, how our Brave Writer lifestyle. So I'm hoping to do, I'm gathering some thoughts to do that next Monday. And I'll probably pop in um, another day this week and show you some of our other games that maybe aren't math, but we really enjoy. Maybe I'll do one on just literature and word games because we have a lot of those too. 
Um, excuse all the objects floating into my periscope, but my, my soon to be nine year old is having a good time with this. Um, I hope you had a good time today and maybe picked up a new game you could buy. Um, how do you follow me? My, okay, hop on. My name on Periscope is not before seven, so I think you can search the people. There's also this little, um, white man down in the corner, and I think if you hit him, you might get the option to follow me on there. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not sure. I know how to follow you all if you type something in the comments. I just hit your name and I can hit follow. But if you hit not before seven and search, you should be able then to follow my profile. So does that come up if you hit that little white man down there in the corner? I'm thinking it might. I'm sorry, I wish I knew. I'm still so new to Periscope um, that I'm not 100% sure how, how to do that. I should know how to follow myself. But go ahead and search Not Before 7, N-O-T-B-E-F-O-R-E, -E, and then the number 7 at the end. I do usually have that written down when I go to Periscope so people can take a screenshot. Let me see if I have it in the other room. This is the hard thing about being live if I'm not completely prepared. <laughs> Let me just write it up here on my dry erase board for you. Okay. In the midst of all the kids' drawings on the dry erase board. Okay. Me. Not before seven. So that's who you want to look for. And you can also look up my blog and find my page on Facebook. It's all at Not Before Seven. So thanks for tuning in today and um, I will see you all another time. Any other questions or any other, um, if you have math questions or homeschool questions or things you'd like to see me speak on, please feel free to either put that here in the comments or send an email to that notbefore7 at gmail.com and you can specifically request something that you'd like to hear how we do it in this house. Again, I'm Mary at Not Before 7. I'm a homeschooling mom of four kids, seventh grade, fifth grade, third grade, and first grade. And I blog and have a Facebook page and this Periscope at Not Before 7. And um, we follow a brave writer lifestyle. And I'm also a former math teacher.